In this challenging but fun analytical geometry problem, we've got this extremely cool function, shown by this red curve on the coordinate plane. And this blue rectangle is crammed between the red curve and the x-axis. We know absolutely nothing about the width or the height of the rectangle, and we need to find its area, but not just any area. We are looking for the largest possible area this rectangle can have. So if you want to try this on your own, now is the time to pause the video because I'm starting to solve it right now. Let's call this horizontal side of the rectangle A. And naturally this side down here will also be A. Next, we'll call this vertical side B. And of course this side over here is also B. Now if we name this pink distance down here C, the coordinates of this point down here will be C0. And we need to travel this distance B to reach this point and it's gonna have the coordinates CB. Next, we move over this distance A to this point, and its coordinates are C plus A and B. Now, we've identified two very cool points on the red curve, and we can put their coordinates into this function to create equations. And we're gonna start with this point. The Y coordinate of the point is B, so instead of this Y in the function, we're gonna write B. And the x coordinate is c. So these x's in the function will become c's. Here is our first equation. Next, we go to this point. And again, the y coordinate is b. So instead of this y, we write b. And the x coordinate is c plus a. So we replace the x's in this function with c plus a, like this. We've created two lovely equations and we're gonna use them to craft a formula for the area of this rectangle. All right, we know b equals this expression, so we can go ahead and replace this other b with that. Let's cancel out the minus c's on either side. Now we need to get rid of this square root thing, and we'll do that by taking this minus a to this side, where it becomes plus, and then by taking the square of both sides. This part becomes this, and on this side, the square root disappears, and we can open up the brackets like this. Let's cancel out the identical terms to get this cleaner equation. And next, we divide everything by a, which gives this. And now, let's take this a times the square root of c to this side, where it becomes minus. And we've got this super cool equation, which I will keep here. And now, let's imagine that we multiply a and b. That would give us the area of this rectangle, right? Because A and B are the sides of the rectangle. And when you multiply sides, you get the area of the rectangle. We already know that A and B equal these expressions. So let's go ahead and multiply those expressions like this. And we get this. And there we are. We've created a formula for the area of the blue rectangle. And it's in terms of C which is the pink distance down here. And different values of C, such as this, give us different rectangles. But which value of C would give the maximum possible area? And that's when the derivative comes into play. You see, the derivative is a function that allows us to find the maximum or minimum values of the primary function. And we drive it using this power rule. This is the derivative sign. And this is the exponent. And what we do is, we reduce the power of x by 1 and multiply the term with the exponent. We'll do it for every term in our formula, starting with this. And root c basically equals c to the power of 1 over 2. That means we'll multiply 64 by 1 over 2, which is 32. The power rule tells us to reduce the power by 1. So it's gonna be c to the power of the quantity 1 over 2, minus 1. It becomes c to the power of minus 1 over 2, which we can rewrite like this. Now, let's take a look at this. This is essentially c to the power of 1, so we can just go ahead and put minus 48 here, because c to the power of 0 is 1. And in this final term, c times root c equals c to the power of 3 over 2. So we multiply 8 by 3 over 2, which is 12, and we subtract 1 from the exponent of c, which gives us c to the power of 1 over 2, 
which equals the square root of c. So here is the derivative of the area of the blue rectangle. And when a function reaches a maximum value, its derivative equals zero. To make this easier, I'll create this u variable, which equals root c. So let's change these root c's to u. Next, we multiply everything by u to get this quadratic equation. And I'm gonna divide everything by 12 because I want something that can be factorized. And I'll get it by adding 4 over 3 to both sides of the equation. Now, in this new equation, this part can be factorized like this. And if we take the square root of both sides, we can conclude that u is either 2 plus 2 over root 3 or 2 minus 2 over root 3. And we know u is the square root of c. So let's change this to root c, which has two possible values. And if we take their squares, we find these two values for c. And we can check these values by putting them into this formula and seeing what we get. But first, I'll make this stuff smaller so that I get some space. We know c and we know root c. And we're gonna use both of them to save time. And we start with the bigger values on the left. Let's put those values into the area formula like this. And I don't want you to get bored, so I'm doing the math for you. And we get minus 128 over 3 times root 3, which is unacceptable, because we can't have a minus area. And I actually understand what's wrong with the bigger c value, so let me explain. This bigger value is basically the distance that goes all the way to the bottom right corner of the blue rectangle. And we don't want that. Which leaves us with these smaller values for c and the square root of c. So now I'm going to put these values into the area formula like this. Again I'm doing the math and we get 128 over 3 times the square root of 3. Which is the maximum possible area the blue rectangle can attain. And there we are people, we found the maximum area of the blue rectangle, and it's 128 over 3 times root 3. And by the way, my son's in his grandpa's home for the summer holiday, and that's why he's not with me in this video. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you push the like button, and make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss our future videos. Have a good day, and see you soon.